Happy February, everyone, and welcome back to the studio. Pretty cool one today. Can you induction braze? Give me. I'm sorry, I don't give consent to have my footage posted online. Okay. Great. Okay. I better not find this on YouTube. Okay. I'll make sure that that happens. The question is, can you induction braze? Yeah. Yeah? I don't know. We'll see. You've only done a couple of hundred of these at this point, right? Yeah. Maybe it didn't work, though. It worked. Looks like it did. Pretty awesome. So, for the current job that we're doing, as you can see, Drew has done more than a few of these. And this is one of the main reasons why we got this machine. Yes, we will definitely use it for forging in the long run, but we wanted to induction braze these stainless steel lags into the bottom of these balusters for custom railing that we're doing. Yep, so that is 332nd flux coated braze rod that we chopped up from three foot sticks into very tiny pieces and you're putting what? How many down there? Putting two a baluster. Two per baluster? Yeah. And then he's come up with a way of regulating the heat between the thicker baluster and the lag, as you can see. And we have this jig that keeps everything aligned and straight. And he's moving the lag around because if he held it in one spot, it would get hot on one side. But because of the induction and you can see the braze melting there or starting to melt you can actually see it fume as it fully melts and he literally just pressed the lag down into there and then you'll see it drop a little bit more once he gets everything fully up to heat Saw it fume and liquefy. He's dialed it in. That was like the perfect amount of braze. Really fast and efficient. For doing something otherwise that we would have done in the past with um, a torch and brazing, but it's just a very controlled way of doing it. So these are 5 16 stainless lags that we sheared the head off of on the iron worker. See how long it takes him to do one. Every beep is a second and it's also counting up there on that time display. So right now he's at 13 seconds. And it is about the speed, but it's also about the control with induction. Just a greater sense of control. 
So he had to step off the pedal to pulse it because he didn't stay full on. But I mean, that is easily under a minute for one. And it's nice and consistent. So not the average use of an induction forge in most workshops, but for this job, we have several hundred balusters to do for one staircase. And it's just been a lifesaver on this. Very efficient and very clean way of doing it. Two, and the other thing is you don't have the, all the extra heat from the torch. There is heat, obviously, from the induction breeze, but it's pretty minimal. Watch me do one last one. doing something and yeah he's done a ton of them and they've gone well the next step after this is we came up with a cool jig on this belt sander and Alan is polishing these right now go ahead and show us how you're polishing these so we have a scotch bright belt on the sander so we have this jig that has Delrin to slide the stainless across without scratching it. And we're using this medium scotch bright belt. And you can see he's running the drill. And we're able to very efficiently polish the stainless. You can see from the mill it has kind of a ribbed look to it. It's still semi-polished, but we're able to take that out and get a very nice satin finished stainless steel with a medium uh, Scotch-Brite surface conditioning belt on the, uh, the Broadbeck grinder here. Again, custom jig. And this is just a little bit off center to put a little bit of tension on the belt. So it's pushing into it as it does it. He's also able to polish out all the heat marks from the brazing. Pretty nice. And yeah, we're using blankets. Everything's padded. Um, we have carts we're putting everything on. Drew's working on a cart that you can see. We also put this uh, pipe insulation padding over everything to keep everything nice and polished good finish on everything to keep it from getting scratched up this job also gets a polished um, brass cap rail you can see one of the custom bends that we had to do in that um, another big part of the job and then uh, these are the sub rails for the same job this has all been custom machined. Jared did all this work 
All of these holes are milled at a very specific angle. Some of the stairs were 35 degrees, some 37. Um, but all of this, a lot of math, a lot of CAD work on the back end to get um, all of these holes precisely laid out. You can see one of his drawings that he was working from. Um, put a new DRO on the mill. Jared installed the DRO, um, which was invaluable on this job. And he came up with some really good tooling uh, for doing the sub rails. This is another look at the sub rails with the fine, final uh, machining touches. You can see all these secondary holes. This is to draw a, a brass um, trim up to the piece um, on all of these. So just tons of holes, lots of machining, uh, lots of work. Um, Jared um, set up dual vices on the mill to um, keep everything aligned. Brand new Shars DRO. Um, and a bunch of custom jigs that Jared milled up. A lot, a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of uh, craftsmanship in this one project by all the guys on the team. Recently, the channel has grown a bit and I just wanna say welcome to everyone who has subscribed recently. Uh, we're so glad you're here. In case you've missed it in past episodes, uh, the studio is located at a beautiful property called Principio Furnace and this is just Heidi and I at the end of the day taking a quick trip around this beautiful property. We are so blessed to be here and work in such a great place. Chase has been working like a madman polishing. These are all the satin finish that these parts come in. These are the trim parts. You can see the tapped holes here and here. They draw up to um, the bars that you were just looking at. Chase has been working very hard in our finish room at the buffer. So he's been buffing like crazy. This is a cut and a color to take them from that satin finish to a nice glorious polished look. It's hard to see in this light how shiny they are, but they go from the satin very polished and then those will get cleaned up and polished and lacquered march 9th and 10th i will be down in lafayette louisiana at the louisiana metalsmiths association conference it's called banging on the bayou if you're down south come check me out at that conference thanks again